Data is starting to turn in the right direction. Summertime, you were at 9%, then it went to 8, now you're at 7. If it keeps going down and it hits, you know, closer to that 2, 3, 4 number, the stock market is absolutely going to love it. Hey guys, Omar Khan here from Theta Trading and today's topic of conversation is has there been some more good news in the stock market because 2022 has been long, painful and depressing. It's been a terrible year for the stock market. It's been a terrible year for the real estate market. Before we move on to the topic, if I could ask you guys a favor, if you could hit that like button if you like the content we're producing, hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying the content you want to get on a regular basis and also the bell icon. If you'd like to get in touch with us, hit us up at thetatradingco.com or if you'd like to book a call with us to see what we do here at Theta. Click on the link. Now, let's get into today's topic. So what's more good news in the stock market? The stock market has stunk all year long. Why? Well, because last year, at the end of 2021, inflation wasn't a big deal. And then in 2022, it became a very big deal. And the stock market has taken a big beating this year as a result of inflation. It kept going higher and higher. And you guys all saw it at the gas station, the grocery stores, you know, just buying something. Uh, everything was more expensive this year. You want to buy a used car. Uh, it didn't matter. Everything's more expensive. Now, what did the Federal Reserve do to combat that? They started raising interest rates, which the stock market does not like, which the real estate market does not like. And that kept going up, 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 up. And now we're on 4% in the United States overnight lending rate. That's from a quarter point the year before. So it's a big deal. Okay. Now, let's take a look at what does this mean for us? Well, what this means is inflation was high all year long. Okay. But finally, we got some good news. So last week, I did a video on the CPI data, consumer price index. That means the cost of goods and services the consumer is paying has finally started declining, okay? Now, let's take a look at something else. This is the second set of good news. Now, you've had persistent inflation all year long. Shit costs more, period, right? Federal Reserve says, okay, we can't have this happening. We've got to raise interest rates. We've got to make you guys poor so you can't buy stuff, okay? But the stock market... Hasn't reacted positively to that until now. Until and now it's finally got two good data points on inflation. Let's take a look at the second one. And if this continues, by the way, guys, we are entering a seasonally favorable period of time from the end of October until about the first week of May. That's when the stock market historically has done well. It's something called seasonality. And that is coinciding with uh, some pretty good inflationary data. So let's jump into it. Wholesale prices rose. 0.2% in October, less than expected as inflation eases. Now, the stock market has had about a, the Nasdaq is up about 8% in the last four days. And it's up that much because the stock market is finally seeing some inflation pressure ease off. It loves that, okay? The real estate market is still going to feel more pain because there's, there's going to be more interest rate hikes ahead. But if inflation starts to cool, maybe those interest rate hikes will not be as big as anticipated, okay? So wholesale prices rose 0.2% in October. Let's go down and dig into the details. All right, here is why the market's happy. On a year-over-year -year basis, okay, right here, third line, PPI, which is producer price index, rose 8% compared to an 8.4% 8 8 increase in October. And this all may seem very boring. And, you know, for a lot of people, this is extremely boring. But what is PPI? PPI is producer price index is how much is it costing that producer so let's say you're making iphones or you're making some other good what is it costing you so it shows here that the producer price index only went up 0.2 percent for month over month from one month to the next it just barely went up and they were expecting 0.4 percent right much bigger increase now on a year over year basis you can see it's came in at eight percent versus 8.4 expectation now that seems like a big number you're like wow that means the cost to produce goods is still up eight percent compared to last year yes it is however it is far lower than the peak and what it's showing you is that numbers are starting to come down this is the second state of good news like i said second set of good news that the market was looking for now this is interesting the second line here a significant contributor to the slowdown in wholesale inflation was a 0.1% decline in services. The first outright decline that measure since November of 2020. That means haircuts, that type of stuff. That actually went down in price. This is exactly what the intended, uh, the intended results were for the Federal Reserve increasing interest rates. That's exactly what they were intending to do. 
slow this down. And that's another encouraging sign. 0.2% in the month. Okay, well, if you annualize that, that's only 2.4%. Now, we know that the Federal Reserve wants to have that inflation number around 2%. That's when the economy is humming, zinging, doing well. Everyone's happy. People are making some good money. When it gets too high, not a great thing. They have to slow the economy down and do all this. And it's horrible for the economy. It's horrible for the stock market. Uh, and it happens every so often. I haven't seen it in my lifetime. Uh, this is my first real bout of inflation. But, you know, looking back at what happened in the early 80s, Volcker, Paul Volcker, the Fed chair back then, uh, increased interest rates substantially. Similar to what is happening right now with Jerome Powell. Rates are going up, but we're finally starting to see some good evidence that it's declining. And that's why the stock market has been going up. Okay. Empire State Manufacturing Survey, that's just for New York. Uh, rents are reading a 4.5%, much better than the estimate of a negative 6% reading. So shows you the economy is still okay. Now let's see what that could mean for the stock market. I don't want to bring up any more graphs or charts or articles. Let's just talk. All right, simple as this. The stock market has gotten absolutely pounded this year because inflation and interest rates. The stock market is loving this. If we continue to see a decline in interest rates. Now, you're starting to see also job cuts, right? I saw Apple hiring freeze, Meta job cuts, Amazon job cuts, Tesla job cuts. There's a lot of companies that are announcing job cuts right now, okay? And that generally shows a slowing economy. When those people are losing jobs, are they going to buy more stuff or less stuff? They're going to buy less stuff because they have no money to buy stuff with. That naturally should slow inflation down. Once the Federal Reserve says, hey, you know what? It looks like inflation's under control because their number one job is to get this inflation number at 2%. We're at like 8 Well, on CPI, we're on 7 and change. We got a long ways to go, right? But the data is starting to turn in the right direction. In the summertime, you were at 9%, then it went to 8 Now you're at 7 If it keeps going down and it hits you know, closer to that 2 3 4 number, the stock market is absolutely going to love it. Now, the unfortunate part for the real estate market is because this number is coming down, but it's not down quite yet, the interest rate hikes that we talked about in these earlier videos are more likely than not going to go through. Maybe not as much as anticipated, and that is when the pain will hit the real estate market. So a bit more pain to on the real estate market. The stock market's a forward-looking mechanism. It is saying, wow, inflation is finally coming down. Finally, after all this time. And that's a big deal, again, like I said, because... Uh, we haven't had inflation since the early 80s, and, and not everyone knows exactly how to deal with this. It's a, it's something that no one has really, really seen before, and not nobody, but very few people have seen their investing lifetimes. But it's, it's been around 40 years since we've had inflation. Now, you can study history, but there's a whole different aspect when you're in it, okay? Uh, another thing I want to point out last year, I discussed this in my last video. Another good thing to look at is the year after a presidential uh, midterm election, the S&P 500 the stock market on average has returned about 19%. Since 1950, it's been positive 100% of the time. If you want, go check out that video. So I think there's some pretty good news for the stock market, guys. Good inflationary data. We're hitting seasonally for a long period of time. And hopefully the worst is behind us. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Take care.